And I am open to additional reforms from both parties, so long as they don't violate the guarantee of a secure retirement. Well, I think if you share the president's political philosophy, I think that uh, last night's speech was exactly what you wanted to hear. Uh, but uh, I think the reality for the president, he is going to have to work with uh, Republicans in the House to get many of the things that he talked about last night. I think he gave a very strong speech. This was a vigorous speech. This was an ambitious speech. This was a guy who feels like he's winning the argument. Now, I think he knows that he's going to have trouble, as he has from the beginning, with this Congress. But coming off his reelection, I think he, he has a, a strong feeling and I think he's right in this, that the American people largely agree with his broader goals. And right now, <laughs> leaders from the business, labor, law enforcement, faith communities, they all agree that the time has come to pass comprehensive immigration reform. I think that the, the problem is going to be for the president is, is if he is insistent on um, uh, doing this streamlining and bureaucracy and also combining that with a pathway to citizen, citizenship for the 11 million undocumented workers, I think that's going to be a very difficult thing for the president, even uh, within members of his own party. So I think if the president is, is, is amenable to taking a, a piecemeal approach, I think some of these things can get done. Immigration is really one of the brighter, more hopeful spots, I think, in the speech and in the political discussion broadly right now. It, it actually may have less to do with the president himself than with a bipartisan group of senators who have really taken the lead on this. The families of Newtown deserve a vote. The families of Aurora deserve a vote. The families of Oak Creek and Tucson and Blacksburg and the countless other communities ripped open by gun violence, they deserve a simple vote. This was the emotional crescendo of the speech. And so the president was making less of a clean policy argument for these reforms than an emotional and a moral argument that we owe these people, these victims and their families, and anyone who could conceivably be a future victim of this sort of violence, we owe them, at the very least, an up or down vote. I think the president is starting to, to recognize that a lot of the far uh, reaching, a lot of the broad things that he talked about earlier on uh, when he first started talking about this issue are probably not going to get passed into law. So uh, what he's going to have to figure out is uh, work with Democrats and work with Republicans to see what, what he can actually get accomplished. And some of that could mean background checks, which uh, is supported by a lot of people. Um, but, uh, you know, banning assault weapons, um, that's probably not going to happen.